Welcome to what is effectively a new channel. I'm going to be using this over the next few months to upload videos of various lessons and playthroughs. First off with the songs from uh, 2019's Demon album. Then maybe do some technique videos and uh, we'll see how it goes. If you want to help it to grow and if you want to let me know that it's useful to you, then like the video, subscribe to the channel and click the notification button so that you won't miss it when I upload future videos. New channel. New beard, trying to look like Kratos from God of War. So far, not successful. And new guitars. Uh, I'm happy to say I'm now working with ESP LTD. I'll be using my new MH1001 for this video and most likely future videos. Uh, I need to get comfortable with it for when we start touring again, whenever that will be. So today, we'll do the song Malum. Start off with a playthrough and then I'll take you through some of the individual parts, riffs, and maybe talk about some of the theory and uh, some of the compositional aspects involved. So, first, play through.
Right, so that was the song, but how do we play it? Let's find out. A few things to say about this song first. Uh, it's a very old school kind of song. It's very raw. The plan with it originally was to write something that sounded like it could have been written before the age of computers kind of took all the writing process onto the digital realm. So this, I wanted it to sound like it was written, you know, in a rehearsal room with the sole intention of being played live. And we do play it live and it works very well, actually. So in that sense, I suppose it was successful. Uh, while you're approaching the song, I bear it in mind. It's very simplistic. It's all about the feeling that you stick behind it, not the, there's no frills or complexity to it, really. There's a few little inventive ways to pre present the harmony, but the harmony underneath is very basic and the structure is very basic as well. So the first riff. Oh, I should say, by the way, I'm tuned to D standard, which means standard tuning down one step. Uh, when I talk about the theory and such, I'll, I will talk in standard tuning. So when I say E minor, you're obviously hearing a D minor because I'm tuned to D, but it's just easier to think, or I find it easier to think in standard tuning. So first riff, open string, D minor chord. Now, if you don't know your major and minor chords, then I would say learn your major and minor chords, your guitar player. So D minor, then open string, 13, 16, 17, okay? Let those strings ring together. Really all you're hearing there is this. Very typical kind of black metal sound, but just presented in a slightly different way. Okay. Then 14, 12, 12. Starting with each string. Okay. Then back to that minor chord. Just moving from 7th fret to 8th fret and back. Okay. And then the same thing again. Moves up to 10th fret for a 2 count. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2. Okay. And then... That again. Time we go down to the fourth fret. Also for a two count. And that's basically the whole riff. I'll play the whole thing for you now with a click so you can hear it in context. Okay, second riff. It's that old school kind of sludgy groove riff. This one is very simple. Bottom two strings, power chord. Hit the third fret on the A string, but leave the bottom string ringing. You hit the bottom string again, you might find that you lose that, that tone a little bit. Okay, then it's power chord, the first fret. Third fret. Third finger stays where it is. Second finger moves to the second fret. Okay. Um, now it's a weird collection of notes. It's quite a chromatic riff. The reason that it sounds logical is because as one chord moves to the next, one note is always staying in place. So you're only ever moving one note at a time. That gives the ear a, a sort of reference point or a, something to latch onto as you move from one chord to the next. It's quite a nice little trick if you're writing these these dissonant kind of riffs, which you probably are if you're a metal guitar player. It sometimes it's useful to give the listener something to latch onto rather than just presenting a ton of weird chords one after the other. Give some sort of connecting point, and in this case, like I say, the connecting point is the fact that one note stays in place all the time. Okay, oh, and another thing about this riff, actually, 
on the album, I think, I think Telok is playing something slightly, well he is playing something slightly different. I think he's doing that. Uh, tritone, tritone, instead of power chord to a tritone. And when we tracked this, it was down to some sort of miscommunication uh, between the two of us and when I, when I sent him the riffs, I, I don't exactly know how it happened, but the point is, when we recorded it, I noticed we were playing, I was playing that, and he was playing that, which shouldn't have worked, but somehow it sounded, oh, I liked it, I liked the sound, it, it added this, this extreme moment of dissonance in the middle of the riff, so we decided to keep it like that, and that's a cool thing about music is sometimes no matter how much you think you know or how clever you are, the random chaos of the universe knows better than you do. And in this case, it was like that. So uh, it's kind of like an art by accident or incompetent, depending on how you choose to view it. So anyway, that's that riff. And then it just moves up to second press. Yeah. So we go. From there, up to second fret, same riff, but just played in second position instead of open. So I'll play you those two riffs back to back with a click so you can hear them in context. And then we get to the riff, which is really the only one I would say is a little bit technically demanding in this song. Uh, it's this. Okay, now, when we did this on the album, everything I was thinking in threes, so one, two, three, one, two, three. Yeah. That's better. Yeah, so the... When we do it live, sometimes that scales down to two because sometimes the tempo, we go a little bit harder. It really depends. But for the album version, we're thinking in three. So, so that's just a minor chord. Seventh fret, eighth fret, sixth fret, seventh fret. Okay, now this part, might present a challenge. Okay, uh, what we have there is seven, on the, starting on the A string, seven, nine, 12. That just moves up a fret. The picking here is going to be all alternate. In threes, and it can be a little bit tricky. So what I suggest that you do if you have problems with it, as you may well do, is take those notes. Actually, this is a piece of advice for everything, for, for whatever you're working on or learning. Figure out the exact notes that are causing you problems, the exact mo movements that are causing you problems, and try to take them out of the riff and make some sort of technical exercise out of them. Rather than just spending time doing arbitrary technical exercises from a book, Make your own exercises from the exact things that you're having trouble with. Um, not only will that mean that you are gearing what you do specifically towards your, your playing, but it also is just more interesting for you because you're tackling stuff that you are already working on that actually means something to you. So in this case, I might take those notes and may, maybe move them around. Just moving around one fret at a time and just doing that picking pattern. I'll show you what I mean now. Um, I'll, I'll do it slow and fast so you can get the feeling. And what I would do on something like this is I would take that pattern, I would, like I say, turn it into a technical exercise and just work the metronome up towards the point where I can play it in context of the riff at the same speed. That way, say the riff is, um, I don't know, like eight bars long, for example, and I'm only suffering on one beat of one bar, it means I don't waste all that extra time practicing something that I can already do 
just to get to the little bar or the beat of the bar that is causing me problems. It really speeds things up for you. It will speed up your playing a lot if you can isolate the exact areas to practice. I'll show you an exercise that I created from this part now anyway. Okay, so you can now work on that if it was causing you a problem and bring it up to the speed of the rest of the riff. In the meantime, if you want to play the riff and that part is a problem, you can just play, play it single notes and then you can at least play along with the song. If that's too difficult, then bass. Um, next is... It's an E flat with an open string at the top. So just a minor chord shape on the sixth fret. No open string at the top. Then this again, that part, and then it's kind of an awkward move. Seventh minor chord down to four, back up to eight. Open the string and then back down the chord. Okay. And then, um, yeah. Repeats again, and on the second time after that riff, it's the same thing, seven down to four. Then open the bottom string, four, three. That's the rhythm part. On my side of the guitar, oh that, by the way, second fret to first fret power chord on the A string. My part is, um, yeah, it's minor triad, so open third string and second fret on the D string. Okay, these are minor triads. 4th fret and 6th uh, fret, so D, D string 6th, uh, yeah, and the 3rd string 4th fret. So, then it shifts down a semitone, down a fret, and I'm just playing the minor chord there, just letting it ring like that. So, uh, yeah, it's there. So that's the same shape, same minor triad. We go up to 7th and 9th fret. And then down a semitone, down a fret. So. Okay. Not too complicated. Let's have a look at the whole riff. I'll do it slowly and then full speed so you can hear, hear the whole thing in context and give you a little, your mind a, a, a little bit of space to latch onto the notes.
then we get to the middle part, which is the slow, slidey section. It's again, it's very basic stuff. It's all minor stuff, but it's dressed up in a way that looks and sounds more complicated than it really is. So we start on the bottom string, slide up to seven. You can slide all the way from the first fret, but do it quickly. It's an effect. It's not a. It's not supposed to be a note. So seven, seven, nine, and when we get to this note, we hit the ninth fret on the D string, and then on the third string we have it open. Uh, so basically, we're just picking out a, an E minor arpeggio, but like I said, it doesn't look like an E minor arpeggio. Then we hit the fifth fret on the third string. You get that. Then we do that again, but this time we land on the on this minor triad. Uh, uh, eighth fret and sixth fret. Okay. Then we do the beginning again. Then that's a seven and seven on the A and the D string. Fifth and fourth string if you prefer. Then a power chord on the seventh fret. Then that moves up one fret, and then the little finger hits the eleventh fret. Okay, and the the bass is doing like so. What you're hearing is like this. Oh yeah, and the, then there's a different ending on the same time. Okay, so that is the again that E flat minor shape, the minor on the sixth fret. With the open string at the top, we're just picking the notes slightly differently than we did before. Okay, you can figure that out. I don't need to talk you through string by string, I'm sure. You just hold the chord down and you'll work it out. Okay, that is the whole riff. So let's have a look at that with the click. Okay, and then we have the riff that was stolen from Pagan Fears. Riff that was inspired by Pagan Fears. Okay, so it's seven and nine on the fourth and third string. Then a major triad, which is 10th fret, ninth fret. Shifts down one, one fret, and then the first finger moves to the seventh fret and back to the eighth. So basically, it's going major triad, minor triad, major. It's a bit. It's an interesting sound. There's quite a number of ways you could analyze that if you really wanted to. If you wanted to get into the theory of what's actually happening there, but that's beyond the scope of what we're doing right now. Okay, then up 13 and 11 minor track. And that's the whole riff. Uh, let's, let's see against a click.
Okay, and then that's basically it. There's one more riff, which is almost the same as the one that we did in uh, earlier in the song, the faster riff, but this time we're, we're, we're thinking in twos because it's at a slightly faster tempo. So instead of, we're going. Okay. So we're not doing this, this thing anymore. We're just playing the minor chords like this. All the same as the earlier riff, except simplified. Still do that bit. Okay, so we end there. We don't play those last two notes that were in the previous riff. So again, let's look, look at that one with the click. I won't bother with doing that one slowly because like I said, it's very, very close to the riff that I already showed you. That's the full song. So that was Malum. If you have any questions about any of this, then comment section down below. Bearing in mind that I already explained the beard. And um, if you like the video, then like the video because it will let me know that it's worth me doing these things. I'll put some links in the description as well for various things. And I will endeavor to have another one of these done within a couple of weeks, I suppose. We'll see how it goes. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.